Uh, we is 317 Consulting Services is the name of our company. Um, we actually started the company two and a half years ago here in, well, in Corona. And then we expanded, moved to Austin almost a year ago now. And so we have kind of two locations going. And we still have a lot of customers here in this area. So we're back in Southern California about once a quarter. And do the rest of what we do, most of our coaching can be done on the phone. Um, because it really, at that point, is more of an accountability process. And then the other folks that we have in Texas, and we have customers in Dallas and uh, San Antonio, New York, Denver. So, and we can do a lot with uh, video conferencing as well. So. Every, every contract we do is, is very unique. And one of the reasons that we also started this independently is that I'm not tied to a Sandler sales model or Miller Hyman or Achieve Global or DDI or Spin or Solution or any of those other folks either. Depending on the situation, I can pull in information from any one of those programs and tailor it specifically to my customer's needs. I think one of the biggest areas that we do tend to focus on is lead generation. It's how do we fill that funnel? And it, it seems that there are never enough opportunities for companies to go out and present their product or their service. And so filling the funnel is just a constant challenge. And I don't think it really matters whether you have a product, a service, big company, small company, those lead generation issues are universal. Uh, we see it with everybody from Microsoft, to Charter Communications, to a little mom and pop, uh, whatever, t-shirt store. I mean, it's everywhere. So lead generation is probably, uh, if not the number one, it's, it's a real close second. But it's been really interesting to see God's hand in all of that because at this point, I would have to say that we're industry agnostic. We do have financial planners and we have insurance folks and we've got some real estate folks and we've got manufacturers and we've got waste management and personal fitness and it's across the board. And we actually also have a, a lady who is doing some salsa, so food products. I mean, we're, we're all over the place. <laughs> and. Uh, there, yeah, <laughs> so there's hope, man. I'm, I'm, I'm doing insurance. I'm <laughs> right now. So it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun, and it, I guess it, it's, it's surprising on some level because we had an expectation that we might have to focus only on smaller businesses in a certain vertical. But we've been incredibly blessed that we continue to work with actually, actually some Fortune 500, Fortune 100 companies as well. Uh, doing training for them and and so it's it's a lot of fun so to write in sales training sales coaching yes. or, or sales continuing education yes. I would actually put that as part of your team part of the ongoing process for continuing to make sure that you're on top of the sales game that's that's part of your team that's part of your vision for maintaining excellence with your team of, of professionals that's probably the way that I would put it in there. Here's the cool thing, okay? I pull out my business card and I give it to folks, okay? And 317 comes from Colossians 317, okay? Book. Yeah, what book, right? Which one? Okay, so Colossians 317, and in all you do, whether in word or deed, do it as though unto the Lord, giving thanks to the Father through him. And so people ask, and it opens a door for me to share my faith with them which is pretty cool. I've had, in the two and a half years that we have had this company up and running, we've had two people now say, oh, you know what, I'm not gonna do business with you because you're, you're one of those Christian guys. Two people. And we've talked to thousands in the two and a half years. Don't be afraid of it. Don't apologize for your faith when you go out there in the marketplace. I got my MBA at Biola. And the specific reason I went to Biola for my MBA was because they do their program specifically as business as mission, business as ministry. And I didn't want to have to apologize for my faith, and I wanted to have that kind of exposure to being challenged in my faith in that MBA program to figure some of that stuff out, because I was kind of wrestling with it a little bit at the time. And it really helped me to focus that. And I am so thankful. As a matter of fact, uh, you know Neil Johnson. Um, actually just spent two and a half hours with him earlier today. And he was one of my professors at Biola. He's now at Hope International. And he goes around the country, actually goes around the world, 
talking about business as mission. And the fact is, folks, you do not have to apologize for your faith. So I look at that as, you know, this is my opportunity to be salt and light. Okay, so my story. I've been in sales, sales management, uh, running organizations for about 18 years. And I started in the garment industry and uh, spent a lot of time there, selling here in LA, working for a vertical manufacturer. And uh, vertical manufacturer basically means that we took it from yarn to finished product. And we had the knitting and dyeing and all that kind of stuff right there in our facilities. Unfortunately, that company is no longer around. Uh, it started in 1967. Uh, the man who started that company passed away in 2002, and by 2005, the company was gone. Uh, the sons ran it right into the ground, so very sad. Um, but all of that said, I learned a ton. I got to sell here in L.A. and in New York, San Francisco, Dallas, Chicago, Miami. There's garment centers in all of those cities. And so Dallas, you get to go see folks at JCPenney. And in Detroit, you get to see Sears. And in Chicago, you get to see Sears. And in Miami, you can see lots of independent folks. And so I uh, got a chance to travel the country, and I spent a week out of every month, 10 months out of the year, in New York City for what they call Market Week. It's lots of fun the first two times you do it, and then it gets really old. Um, so I did that, ran a sewing factory here in Montebello for about three years. And along the way, by default became the sales manager, sales trainer, operations manager, uh, pick a title, I probably wore the hat at one point uh, with that organization. I had 11 salespeople around the country that I was managing and I had 175 sewing machines to keep busy. And it was in a, at a time when that industry was taking a deep dive uh, following NAFTA and then the implementation of CAFTA, which are not necessarily um, nice words in the garment industry these days. Um, also got a chance to do some corporate sales training along the way as well and spent four years uh, traveling the country working with companies like Verizon Wireless and Bechtel and Westinghouse and Boeing and Washington Group and T.Y. Lin. And, uh, one of the things that we did there is we did a lot of presentation skills and we prepared teams to respond to big government RFPs. And uh, we had a, a four-year stint where uh, we averaged about $42 billion in wins with those government contracts and our, our peak was 53 billion in 2001. Um, unfortunately, we didn't keep, get to keep any of that money because uh, if you get written into the RFP, you can take a share, but we weren't able to do that because we were just the consultants that came in and helped them to win it. Okay, sowing and reaping. Okay, I like that. Other definitions of sales. I want to pick on the sales trainer over here. I'm gonna get to him in a minute. Okay, yes ma'am? Slick? Wow. So you, you, hold, you hold salespeople in a very high esteem. Excellent. Okay, slick forms of manipulation. Okay. And motivation. And motivation. All right. So I have to trick you into buying my stuff. Yes. Is that? Okay. Excellent. So just so I understand. Okay. I would say solving a need. Okay. Solving a need. I like that one. That works. Well, I was just kind of what she said, but it's, it's basically uh, understanding the customer's express need. Okay, okay. Serving the customer. Serving the customer. I like that. Okay. Making money. Making money. There you go. Getting an order. Yeah, getting an order. Okay. Press hard, three copies. Yeah. Exchange of money for product. Exchange of money for product. Okay, so he's, he's got Webster's down. Okay. Excellent. So why, why is sales in the eyes of some? held in such lofty esteem, or maybe not so lofty esteem. What has happened to the sales industry that we look at it with such disdain in some cases? You got guys trying to get it to buy stuff. Okay. Hard pressure approach. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it is that press hard three copies approach, right? We don't really say that anymore because we're not using carbon paper. <laughs> but uh, it's showing my age, I guess. <laughs> so let's actually, you know what? You guys stand up. You've been sitting down for the last 40 minutes. Stand up for a second. We're in a seminar now. We're in a seminar now. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I'd like you to visualize for a minute is the act of trying to pull somebody closer to you. 
what would that look like? So close your eyes for a sec. And if you're going to pull somebody closer to you, what does that require you to do with your hand? Okay, you've got to extend that hand. And what are you going to do with that hand? Okay, so I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing this. Okay, you're grabbing that person to pull them close to you, right? Okay, so that's kind of a traditional approach to sales. Now, what if instead of grabbing somebody to try to pull them close to you, instead you extend an open hand with an offering so they can see exactly what it is you have to offer? And they understand what that product or service is from a value standpoint. It's not hidden in this closed fist over here that we can't see, feel, touch, poke at, figure out, does that actually fit my needs? Now we see it, it's on, it's on your hand, it's open. And I get to play with it. I can poke at it and ask questions about it. Does that make sense? Okay. So go ahead and have a seat. Thanks for playing. Now, this, this open hand concept, one of the other things I like about it is that it helps us to see very visually that it's also not in my control. It's up to God. He's going to do with it what he will. And it's, it's not up to me, my time or my agenda, but it's, it's God's time. It's his agenda. It's his stuff anyway. I'm called to be a good steward of his stuff, right? Yeah. And it is the work of the Holy Spirit. We, we can only plant the seed. The Spirit's the one that's going to make do the convicting and, and the changing of the heart. Just to clarify, how do we continue to use it, the Internet and social media specifically as a, a point of high touch, high relation? to stay in touch with our customers. Am I understanding correctly? A couple of thoughts on that. One is it really depends on your business. Um, some of your businesses will completely lend themselves to that kind of a market space. Um, others don't even go there because it's not really worth your time. Unless you have a, a completely integrated marketing approach. And by that, what I mean is you have several different channels that you can use to market your products and services. If the message needs to be sent, I'll just I'll use a personal example. Our business, we do sales coaching and training. We do not generate leads. We don't generate opportunities through our internet presence. When people meet us, they get our card, and they go to the internet, and they look at our website, and they look at our blog, and they look at the LinkedIn, and look at Twitter, and all those things. That's a credibility check for us. They want to know if we're legit. It's not a lead generation source for us. Now, some of you may be able to use social media as a lead generation option. But for the most part, the way that we find our, our customers, it's going to be networking, referrals, and just getting out there making phone calls or walking into a company face to face if, if that's an option for us to actually be able to do that. I have an a amazing bride who flies or drives over here once a quarter and takes care of business. And we, we don't. I mean, I have partners here that, that we do make referrals to and that kind of thing. Um, but for the sales training and coaching that we do here, it is either myself or, or Carrie. And by the way, that is my, my wife in the back of the room. That's Carrie. Yay. Say hi, Carrie. Yay. <laughs> it's a dream come <laughs> true. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> that's, that's on camera. That's a I good am. Answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you step out for a minute? Honey? Turn the camera off. Um, actually, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be really careful now. Actually, here, here's the kind of amazing thing. I was really concerned about that initially, to be honest. Uh, what we have found is that there are days when we will spend literally 24 hours together, and you would think that it would be just horrific, but we have complementary enough personalities and we understand each other's personalities enough that we haven't gotten to that. I mean, certainly there are moments. I, I can't paint that kind of a disillusioned picture, <laughs> um, but we've, we've come to a, an amazing understanding of each other's strengths and weaknesses. And here's the other cool part. Um, Carrie is, and I say this in love, you know this, honey. She is a freak because she actually likes to make cold calls, okay? There are, I think, 
three people in the whole world who like to make cold calls, and she's one of them, okay? And, and the other two, I think, anyway. So she really likes doing that. So if we have customers who have needs in that area, oh my goodness, talk to my wife, please. She's amazing. When it comes to the face-to-face -face stuff, the presentation skills, negotiating, closing, the face-to-face, -face, buckle to buckle, that's where I jump in. And I, I like the process part as well. And Carrie's not necessarily that big on process. It's not her favorite thing. So I do more of the process. And she also has some amazing uh, financial background. So she deals with, with that part of the business as well. And there's a follow-up. And, and there are definitely uh, roles and responsibilities that are clearly understood. And I think the, the more clearly you can outline that, whether it's spouse or not, uh, the more clearly you outline that in up front, uh, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, it doesn't matter who that partner is. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And, and there, absolutely, she is the owner of the business. And so she has final say. Yes, sir. Um, I believe very strongly that God has given me the talent. I mean, First Peter 4.10 specifically says that God has given you a gift to share, to share with the rest of the planet, right? And that's what I rest on. Um, there's always people around that say, yeah, you know, you should do this. And even today we heard, well, you know, it was hilarious because the person that said it, I'm working at a Disney. Did you just say that? She said, well, coaching is, is kind of a fad. It's going to go away in about two or three years. And I thought, oh, it could be a minute. Um, and I had to kind of break it down as far as why he thought that. Because he thinks, in his mind, when businesses start selling, what do you need coaches for? But then I asked him, I said, the Dallas Mavericks just won an NBA championship. Next year, or they all suck. Yeah. It's the same type of mentality. Um, so, really, I mean, truly resting on God and, and helping and, and understanding where other people are coming from with that negativity in order to be able to convert it into a positive. I mean, I, I agree. Listen to wise counsel, but seek the master counsel. Mm -hmm. I think I reminded the story of Noah. You know, I think God told me to go to the boat and he said, me out. There's a couple of books I'll, I'll recommend, and I know you've got all kinds of free time that you can do this reading, right? <laughs> but a couple of books. One is Spin Selling. It's been out there for a while. Neil Rackham uh, wrote this book, oh gosh, it's got to be close to 15, 20 years ago even now. Um, but it's a great book, Spin Selling. And spin actually stands for situation, pain, um, implications, and need, okay? The other one is solution selling, or actually the new solution selling, and that's by a guy named Keith Eads, E-A-D-S. And that's, that's just a, a great book. Um, also talks a lot about pain, and the fact is that most of us buy things to resolve pain on some level. Now, it, it may not be the, you know, how many of our kids are really experiencing huge pain that they don't have the latest Call of Duty Black Ops, right? But it is a pain because their friends are playing it and they're not. Okay, so it, it is a it, it's a pain on some level Emotional for your kids. Pain. Yeah. Emotional. So we solve that pain by making that purchase. Um, different way of looking at things, maybe, but great book. Yes. That's what we're doing. We're just having a little conversation around the coffee cooler here. She's a public speaker right. trainer, you know. But All right. Good Anyway, I just, you know, I just want, uh, you know, how come you took the class, you know, what did you want to get out of it, and, and how's it going, and, uh, any insights? Um, well, I'm really grateful for the class that you offered, Stephen. I learned a lot through the experience here. Um, starting a biblically-based company is definitely a leap of faith. I've been praying about it. I talked to you last year about the idea, and um, to, when this class offered, I felt like God saying, okay, let's get going now, and so... The class here really opened up my eyes. It provided balance between um, the business sense and also the practical application of what to do as a business owner. I like the integration of faith and um, the, the wisdom given. I love the articles that were given. And I like the practical skills that I've learned along the way about how to write a business plan and, and what are marketing strategies. I like the speakers that you've brought in, um, different perspectives in, and to be able to ask them questions. I've also enjoyed the conversations that we've had with other people and, 
And the opportunity, I think, the most was that this was a push from God to really step down and sit down and think about what I needed to do. And so I got to dream, and I got to build, and I got to create. And I found that um, through this process, I left last week while working on my business plan with the impression, wow, I am living the kingdom of heaven here on earth because I know not only who I'm working for with God as um, my father and creator and CEO of this business, I'm also recognizing that when I um, work in partnership with him, I'm helping to build his kingdom. And that is something that's very um, encouraging and motivating and um, helping through the, t the tough times. Like when I don't know how to do something, I'm like, you know, I'll present my fishes and loaves. So I, that's my business philosophy or business model is the loaves and fish model for um, biblical entrepreneurs. So, um, so you wrote the business. Did you ever think you could write a business plan? I mean, no. have you written one before? No, and I think that was nice because um, the I knew I had to have a business plan. I've been talking about having it, and this class provided the steps that I needed to get to that place. And I needed someone to guide me along the way because it's easier to talk. Oh, I have this business idea, and then God says, "Good, now let's let's walk the talk, Stephanie." And that's what. He provided to me through this class was the opportunity to take the practical steps and put it down on paper. So, and I liked having the deadlines because it pushed me to get things done. Good, good. good. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Perfect. Okay. Hey, you're a public speaker, huh? You know, sort of say, you know, why did you take the class? What were you hoping to get out of it? And how's it going? Yeah, it's going awesome. I love um, coming to the class. Um, I saw the ad in the. Christian examiner, uh-huh. And you know, when I read all the the things were offered in the class, I really got excited because um, personally I'm I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for about ten years, but um, at this point that I wanna take my business to the next level and I felt like I needed a little bit more coaching, a little bit more education or you know, expertise. So, and that's the main reason I took the class. And I also wanted to um, add my faith to it because, you know, um, it's it's not it's a it's somewhat of a challenge to make sure that you are doing things God's way in the business place. So I wanted to get a, a different perspective on, on how to do that. And that class, I think that was the greatest thing earned from this class: learning how to incorporate your faith with your business. So did. The uh, you, so you're writing your business plan already? You're going to write it? Have you written one before? Or is, is this I've helpful? Written, I've written one before, but now um, I'm, I'm in the process of writing another one, a more extensive business plan. And um, I've gotten the, the, um, the you know, the, what I would say, is, um, the prompt to go ahead and, and do it. And I've got the deadlines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to do it. So I'm working on that now. I'm excited about my PowerPoint because I haven't done one, you know, with my business plan before. So I'm excited about doing that. Yeah. All right. Would you recommend the class? Oh people? definitely. I've 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 told so many people. I'm I'm waiting just to hear when the next date is. Okay. Yeah. And what about like uh, maybe we thought about taking it to a church. Do you think a church uh, group might benefit from that? Definitely. Actually I was planning to um share my information that I've learned in the class with my church um, family. Um, but definitely, this would be something that would be um, just awesome for the church. Um, first of all, you'll already have the, um, the Christians, you know, you would already have your market there, and you would just add your um, business expertise with that, and I think that, that would work. So tell me, why did you take the class? What were you hoping to get out of it, and how's it going? It's, it's exciting. Um, my daughter, actually I took the class to help my daughter. She was right in kind of a decision making time that her and I weren't in real good agreement on. And so I saw your class and I thought, okay Lord, this is an answer to my prayers. Because she wanted to be an entrepreneur and I wanted to be able to encourage her, but I didn't think I was being real encouraging. And um, so we came together. And it's been an amazing tool, um, and it, just the the knowledge and um, the information that you've you've had here has been great. And it's really helped our relationship because I can see through her entrepreneurial eyes, I think, better. So I, I, I think it's been really good to come together for us to come together. 
So is she going to write a business plan? Has this helped her in her focus? Or it's how helped it her up? in her focus. She's actually got her cards. She's got a plan going. And I was always behind her, but I said, Rebecca, you have to have a plan. You know, an idea is great, but I want to see a plan as a mom, you know. I thought school was real important, but I, she has a heart and um, she has a passion for what she's wanting to do, so I wanted to stand behind her. And yes, the business plan is in, in the making, and she'll be here next week to um, present that plan. And I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing, because I think um, the speakers that you've brought in, I, none of us would have been able to pick the, the brains of these amazing professionals, um, especially in such a small group of people. We've gotten to ask questions of very, very successful business people that nowhere would you be able to do that. I, I mean, I don't know where you would have found that. So thank you for that. How's she doing with her business plan? Is she enjoying it too? I mean, this exercise, the discipline? She's enjoying it. Um, I was excited. She um, and, and, the, and even the leads that have come out of this class have been really good. That you have a heart for um, each one of these people, and I've watched you week after week identify, and you're looking for those connections. And I really believe that's a gift. So thank you for that as well. She is doing very, um, she's really excited. Um, I don't know exactly day by day how she's using her time. She works full time. Um, but I, I see it coming together. So, and the business card thing, that was just exciting to see her take that step, because that was a step of faith, to actually put it in print. Let me ask you this, we are thinking of offering the class to high school students. What do you think about offering this to high school? In this economy, I think it would be an amazing opportunity, because a lot of these kids don't have the resources, um, or the funding that they need, but they may have a passion and an idea and they need the tools. So I think this would be an excellent um, class for high schoolers to take. Yeah. All right, thank you, yeah. thank you. We just had a little fun here. You okay. Know. What I'm trying to think about is like, you know, why did you take the class? What were you hoping to get out of it? And, and, and how's it going? Well, uh, I took the class mainly because um, I had kind of started the business before, uh, but I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I. I hadn't made that many sales with the t-shirts, um, mainly because I didn't really know how to market them. And I feel like I've gained so many um, ideas and a lot of insight from this class. Uh, speakers have been great. Uh, I believe Wendy was saying that a little bit earlier. Definitely, they've been very professional. Um, I've learned quite a lot from them. I, I feel like my brain has just kind of been stimulated through this whole class. I've learned a lot. Had, had you written a business plan? Are you writing one now? How's that coming along? Uh, I've written a one-page plan. Uh, I haven't written the full document yet, but just being forced to write it has made me think of other avenues for the business and um, new ways to market it, and it's helped me kind of focus on a particular niche. I felt like before I was trying to sell Christian and conservative t-shirts, just an example. Now I'm feeling I should focus on Christian t-shirts. Better to do one thing well than to do two things poorly. So I, I feel like that's, it's forced me to have um, some discipline in the business, I guess you might say. Yeah, well then that's the beauty, you know, to, to, to the class, if it can force you to bring focus. For some, right. The power of focus right. is really just uh, unbelievable. So, and you want to make the mistakes on paper in the business plan before you're using real money. Yeah, definitely. All right, great. Hey, would you recommend the class for other people? Or? Certainly, certainly. Okay, hey, beautiful, thanks. Hey, we're just having a little fun here. Yeah, just, just, we're taping away.